Greetings travelers and welcome to the YouTube. Today we have another new indie game that we are about to play out and test out and it's called the Nebula. It's one of those roguelite games uh, I guess that gained a lot of popularity lately mostly through a game called the Vampire Survivors. I'm very sure that uh, most of you are familiar with that one and this is in the same genre of games but this is based in space. So let's take a look what it is but first of all as always uh, we are going to take a deep look in every single aspect of the game and we are going to start off with the options so as you can see we have some uh, sound options here of course uh, you can hear the volume being played out uh, pretty basic music volume sfx uh, ui volume i'm going to leave it at 1.5 just for the for the lose of it and we'll save it and then we're going to check out we are going to check out the rest of the options here in the game We have uh, a mini health bar, damage text feedback, the camera shake and the man weapon auto aim. And now I'm enabling it, but as you will see later in the game, we should have that disabled probably because it's uh, more intuitive to play it like that. When it comes uh, to the graphics, uh, we have uh, quite uh, an elaborate uh, uh, diversity in, uh, in resolutions. So you can see we have higher than 1080p, which is not so often that we encounter in these G-Round playtests which makes me very happy we have the basic full screen or non full screen option so uh, there is that the game is still in early development I do hope that down the line we'll have more but for now I think this will suffice now when it comes to the game you can go to your hangar and you can see a lot of abilities we're going to play around a little bit uh, later and showcase them uh, you basically have a way to upgrade your weaponry and use some uh, varieties of abilities here in the game that will lead you for a better experience you know so the way it works is that uh, you are collecting those things that are called gears in the upper left corner and then we are using those to basically purchase all kinds of uh, upgrades to our starships in terms of weaponry shielding armor health and so on and of course we have the buffs here that i'm showcasing and these buffs are something that can either be gathered with gears or just collected throughout the game by playing the game and in basically engaging uh, with the different variety of NPC enemies, uh, boosts on the map and so on. Now when it comes to the system requirements it's pretty simple and lenient, a 64-bit Windows operating system, only 4 core capable CPU, not even specified which one, 4 gigabytes of RAM memory and 2 gigabytes of uh, virtual RAM capable GPU. I think that is very lenient for most systems to be able to run it without any significant issues you know. So you can basically run this simple game on anything. The gameplay uh, is uh, what it is. The graphics are pretty simple like uh, this entire genre is so I think that a lot of people will be able to run this game without any, any issues uh, on whatever they are running at the moment not necessarily a gaming PC but let's see uh, what the developer of this game is so who is the developer and what do they have to say about the game well first of all hello nebula saviors Greetings from Jutag Pixel. I am a solo game developer, fairly new to game dev world. After a few years of learning several prototypes and testing games, I started to work on Nebula as my first really complete project that I decided to polish to a commercial level. Thanks to Ground Prep Platform, I am honored that I can share with you a demo of Nebula. In the sea of Rogolites, Bullet Heaven shooters, it is hard to stand out, so I decided to put an extra attention to visual aspects, game balance, and replayability. I do hope that you will like it. Without any further ado, jump to Nebula and face hordes of invaders, experiment with different weapons to find the ones that suit you the best. Collect gears and spend them in the hangar for upgrades that will help you to overcome next difficult missions. Well, my friends, we are just about to do that in a moment. And I guess we are able to explore this world and see if what is being said here is true, if there is really some replayability value to the game, how stunning are the visuals, uh, how good does it feel to play the game, and just uh, give our all well-rounded opinion on the experience that we are about to have. So without further ado from ourselves as well, let's check out the content of this game. All right, now, when it comes to the gameplay, as I said, it's something that I think most of us will be familiar with. Uh, you can see it on your screens. 
basically it's a little bit slow to start and the, the movement of the main weapon you're seeing on this particular ship which is called the gunner uh, it is basically the first choice of ship you will get but you can also switch between five different ships in the game of course uh, as you can see we have uh, the regular boosts uh, we are familiar with this from other simple games like this uh, it's not about the graphics of course so the graphics will be very arcade very simple uh, I have a couple of uh, words and suggestions to add about the sound design of course and about some of the visuals but for the most part is uh, what you come to expect and for the most part it's a game that is based purely on the gameplay or and the gameplay experience for the people therefore the graphics will always be secondary in these types of games I mean I mentioned earlier the most popular I think uh, one in this typical genre here which is probably Vampire Survivors that doesn't have uh some graphical style that is very elaborate or very realistic either you know it's most uh, very simple very arcade very pixelated which is kind of in the flavor of the gameplay as well but that actually enables a lot of people to be uh, able to run this type of a game on many many different setups and uh, to kind of focus on the gameplay itself now i did mention you will notice here the main weapon which is uh, the, the little yellow dot here on this particular ship uh, when you put that on automatic because of the slow turning pace of the weapon you can actually upgrade that down the line with uh, you know your upgrades and with using your gears in the hangar bay however when you are starting off it is extremely slow it is very slow to even control it with your mouse therefore i wouldn't suggest leaving it on automatic because uh, then you completely lose control over, over the direction of your weaponry, of your direction of your fire and given how slow it turns, uh, it will lead to a lot of misses down the line which is not very good because uh, in this game as you will notice uh, in this video it is simply very easy to get swarmed by a multitude of enemies now the gameplay is a lot of fun I have to say especially you know uh, this game is kind of slow to start and it takes some time to build up your powers, it takes some time to build up your abilities but once that happens it, it will be much more fun and much more dynamic experience one thing I will say it, uh, it feels that role and that same flavor that most of these games uh, kind of uh, tend to go for and that is uh, a very very addictive experience for the player you know uh, and addictive when I say addictive I don't uh, mean it in negative connotations of course I do mean it in a positive way basically a game that keeps on uh, uh, it's on the entertainment and the engagement I would say and keeps you engaged with your gameplay now you will see you know as you move forward and uh, this is a different ship we have here on uh, on the screen right now uh, you will have to play around with all of them as you saw at the beginning of the video we don't have everything unlocked for this first demo version it's still a playtest it's still in early development down the line uh, we will probably get a lot more options given uh, the ships and not only given the ships but I would say regarding the weaponry and the armament we can use uh, an armor set defensives and everything but also there are these points on the map uh, that will provide some boosts some of them are healing boosts some of them are additional weaponry like this and as you will see this looks absolutely glorious now i have a couple of things to say about the sound effects and the visuals of some of the explosions i think there is some work to be done here still uh these square like explosions i'm not really fond of them uh, they look a little bit uh, too simple on one side and when you get many of them it really looks very very arcade and very old school and kind of difficult to see what uh, you what is going on basically on the screen uh the little uh, the little gems that we are getting dropped which actually leave us uh, and lead us to collect uh, more and more of them so we can power up our weaponry for we can power up our ships and uh, i'll pay more and more armaments more and more abilities uh there is maybe a little bit too much of them I'm not sure uh, I will leave to you in the comments to actually share with me your opinion on uh, on uh, this concrete topic uh, based on you watching this video or if you're playtesting and playing the game uh, through that as well I do think that it's getting a little bit out of hand when you see the number of them although that means that as you increase the range your weaponry can destroy enemies at very very vast differences now one thing I will say about uh, Nebula is that uh, for us uh, uh, people like me basically that are very much fond of uh, space simulators, uh, sci-fi games, space sims and uh, basically not only the space sims genre but uh, anything and everything that is kind of related to space and sci-fi I think that this particular game can spread the pitch if we want to play a game of this genre 
but uh, we want to make it feel uh, kind of like our own, so instead of uh, going against uh, a hordes of zombies and monsters, we are going in a spaceship against other spaceships, uh, and uh, I think it's glorious. Now, it's a little uh, it's a little fun game, of course, uh, and I think that it has a lot of potential, you know. Obviously, it's not uh, something that is uh, especially new on the market, I should say. However, I think that it is able to spread the pitch, and uh, if it gets more development down the line, I think that uh, it might turn into something that uh, will be desirable by a lot of people that enjoy and appreciate this type of game. Uh, there is uh, something to be said about the weaponry. I think that uh, the game still leaves some balancing needed because uh, very often, especially at the start of the game, uh, I did mention earlier it is slow to start. Uh, by that I mean that uh, the weaponry you are obtaining at the beginning of your gameplay as you are slow to collect those little diamonds, those little crystals to power up uh, the weaponry you are usually getting is not as elaborate and cannot really protect you against the big swarms of enemies therefore you are left with the only other option that you have and that could be kind of run away and try to go in a part of the map and in a direction that uh, lacks a big number of enemies though they will follow you and you will spawn so all in all uh, it is slow to start but uh, the thing is with the weaponry not only it is slow to start it's so very random now i know that the rng element is, is very very big in these games and that is part of which makes these games fun and engaging and uh, replayable at the end of the day However, however, I would say that maybe a little bit of a better balance between a weaponry that can use an area of effect abilities and can neutralize enemies that are very close around you and they are closing up uh, in contrast to a weaponry that is firing at distance might be, might be an improvement uh, for the future. Definitely something that I am going to suggest in my review and um, I basically am suggesting I guess in this video as well. Now you'll see as we move forward with our gameplay, we are getting more and more abilities, those lasers are just glorious. Uh, later in the video I will show you a full on laser build, uh, probably my favorite in the game. Uh, and they are very very good because, uh, uh, first of all, if you have them as your secondary weaponry, they will do this on automatic and they, if you increase the speed and their power, as you can see, they can clean our house. If you add that your main weapon as a laser one, because we have a spaceship that is using the laser as his main weapon, as its main weapon, it is even more glorious because then you can actually take control of your own laser and as you move it around the map you can basically uh, sweep across the screen and destroy a multitude of enemies. Uh, the more improved uh, your laser is, the more damage it will do of course. But uh, I think that uh, when it comes to the fun of the gameplay, I think it is uh, it's very much uh, very very entertaining. Now we see some asteroids around the around the line. Those asteroids will destroy the NPC enemies that get uh, uh, hit by them. That will also destroy you, so you have to pay attention to them. But they can also be used as cover. So for now, we have NPC enemies. We have these power-up zones that provide us with variety of boosts and we have asteroids to take cover. Hopefully down the line in the game we'll have uh, more diversity of uh, terrain and more things that we can use to basically uh, supplement our game. Now look at this glorious explosion. I only wish that uh, the sound effects of this and the visual effects were a little bit better. Something that I will definitely suggest and something that I think that can really work on in the future. Now, uh, I, I told you uh, that I'm going to show you the hangar base here, you can see some abilities and basically with the gears that are in your upper left corner of the screen, you can use them to purchase uh, additional boosts. I, bo I boosted my speed here, I boosted my main weapon for the ship that I'm going to use next on the screen and of course I think that we are going to end up boosting uh, maybe our secondary weapon as well just for good measure. I'm not going uh, very much for health, I'm usually going uh, for a lot of damage, uh, at least uh, for my first playthroughs of this game. Now this is the laser build that I mentioned uh, earlier, you can see now we have three of them, we have the yellow one which is my main one and that I have control of, and you have uh, the other two that are firing just randomly, one is of course going to be the fire phaser and one is the ice lance and I think it's glorious. Now the more you play and the more power abilities you gain, the more NPCs will spawn and the harder difficulty of the enemies will be. You have probably noticed by now some of the bigger ships coming at you and they take multiple hits, especially this big boy here on the right, they take a lot of, a lot of shots to get destroyed. 
Now when it comes to our own ship, we have uh, s several different builds. We can start with a simple gunship that has a simple turret as the main weapon. We can start with a ship that has a double forward gun as their weapon. We can start with a sickle ship. Now the sickle ship was very fun. We had it earlier on the video. It is uh, a ship that has a main ability uh, that uh, when it hits an NPC enemy, it kind of creates a sickle around them and the sickle turns around in a couple of cycles and destroys everything around that NPC enemy. Now that is good for AoE and I guess if you're looking for something uh, good to start off and have AoE, I guess the sickle ship is the one that you're, be, you're going to be looking for. However, uh, as you saw at the beginning of the video, we have still a lot of those starships uh, locked. So I think that uh, by the time that this game is fully released, we'll have much more choice in the way we start the game. Now, down the line, of course, as you gain more weaponry, as you gain more abilities, you will be able to customize your experience to your best. As you can see now, we're getting some uh, health because, uh, of course, we were lacking some health. You can basically use those uh, level ups to either increase your health, increase your armor, or get a new weapon, or if you're offered, upgrade some of your old weapons. Down the line, the way it looks like now in this demo version, we uh, don't have enough uh, development yet to actually for me to be able to verify this or not. But it looks like that uh, down the line, when you play the game a lot, uh, you will be able to obtain uh, the whole multitude of weapons on your ship. It kind of looks limitless. It kind of looks that these ships, uh, the way they look on your screen, that they are kind of built in a way that they are very customizable, very, very modular and able to basically attach all kinds of weapons on them. So that leads me to believe that uh, the starting choice of your ship might be uh, in the way how you want to start your experience. So if you feel like I felt that we lack a little bit of area or effect abilities at the beginning, you might want to go with something like the sickle ship or maybe down the line they will have a new ship that deals with AOE in a better way. And uh, if you are just uh, looking for single target damage, then you have uh, more options there. But down the line, you will be able to upgrade your ships uh, to your liking and basically add all kinds of variety of weapons. You see like uh, freezing balls, regular lasers, plasma balls, uh, fire weapons, uh, freezing weapons, you know, weapons that slow down the enemies. You get power up that will speed you up. You get power up that will slow them down. You also can go to your hangar with your gears and purchase items and upgrades for your ship that will increase your speed and that will increase uh, your armor penetrations to other ships. So all in all, there is a lot of replayability here, a lot of customizability. You know, it looks like a simple game at base level, but it has a lot of layers uh, that a player can use to basically customize their experience and engage with the game. So I feel like uh, no two ships, unless you're going meta, no two ships will end up being the same. It is a fun little game and uh, I think that it has a lot of potential, but uh, for now let's see what the pros and cons are and this one of the cons, see like this effect looks like even a little bit choppy and jumpy, which only looks like that, uh, let me reassure you, like in the game it's very fluid. So uh, what does this game have to offer and what does this game have to be uh, working on in the future? First of all, it's very simple, dynamic and fun as you have noticed. It's session based so you can just jump into the game and enjoy your gameplay without worrying about progress and without actually having to tie down to previous uh, sessions. Uh, you can only keep your gears. It's very easy to run, so a lot of people will be able to run on a variety of systems, which is uh, accessibility thing and it's always good, you know, especially in a simple game like this. It's addictively engaging, as I mentioned, because it's so fun to play. It provides you with a variety of different builds that you can use. And of course, it's decision-based gameplay, so your decisions actually make, uh, make a dent in how the game is played. Of course, it has uh, a unique take in an established genre with, being, uh, with it being in space. Now, when it comes to the cons, uh, I have to say it's a little bit slow to start. Uh, it needs a little bit more ability balancing, I would say, especially at the beginning of uh, the gameplay session, you know, with the, how the weapons work and uh, the type of weapons that you're getting. Uh, sometimes you can get early swarm by the NPC enemies before you can actually engage with more powerful armaments and uh, defend yourself. And of course, I do believe that uh, there is still work to be done in the SFX and VFX uh, departments because uh, at certain times the sounds and the visuals in the game done, doesn't, do not feel that good. Uh, you have seen it here basically at the end of the previous sequence. Uh, it looks a little bit choppy and like laggy, but in uh, honesty, it is not. All in all, I think that it's a game, like I said, with a lot of potential and I hope uh, that we'll be following the development on this game in the upcoming future. 
hopefully we'll see the improvements that are being made and hopefully hopefully at the end of the day we'll be ending up with another wonderful addition to this genre once again my friends thank you for watching the video stay tuned the next one is coming uh, very very soon like and subscribe and catch the next one until then the celestial voyager is beaming out